Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Undermine by Ken Soul Studios. This is a two to six player game that takes roughly about, I would say 25 to 45 minutes. And this is a game about mining, choosing one of your miners, placing it on the outskirts of an area where you're going to be able to gather extensive and uh, useful resources as you move along the board, climbing up the mountains and basically removing the rock going down vertically and as you do so you're going to unveil unique resources like gems gold and uh, emeralds as well as diamonds as well as copper and of course eventually a bomb rock bomb rocks will explode and can actually trigger more explosions eventually reducing this pile into nothing your objective score as many points as you can by gathering as many of the resources from your bag into your deposited resources and escaping before the area blows all the way up. Can you do so and win the game by having the most resources at the end? Find out in the game Undermine. To set up the game, take out the main game boards and place them together to create this board that you see here. Then go ahead and give each player a starting character with their own starting ability. Each character is also going to get a character standee and a character starting location. Next, you're going to go ahead and take out the small game board, which is going to reference the explosions of the bombs and the amount of actions each player will have on their turn, as well as contract cards. Shuffle the deck and deal out five within reach of all players. Set aside any extra character standees, starting positions, and of course character cards, as well as this bag um, after you build your board. Speaking of building your board, there are two ways currently to build the game. The first way is you can go ahead and assign the tiles however you'd like. And as you can see, I've kind of made this little like undermine area all on my own. But there will be starting cards that will allow you to set up your own layouts. that will tell you how many of each of the tiles go in what positions to create the starting set. But this game is customizable, so you can choose how you'd like to do that have the players starting from the player um, to the to the last of the starting player and make sure they place their starting player position next to two tiles and always um, away at least three spaces from another player. So I can't position my character here and here, it's too close, but I can position it here and here. Now they're far enough away. Take your character standee and put it on top of that area and then have the starting player begin the game with their 10 actions and that's it. In Undermine, each player is going to get 10 actions on their turn, and you can take any of these actions that you'd like, as many as you would like, up to a total of 10 action points. Go ahead and take your little marker and put it on 10. Look at your character and make sure you don't forget about their special ability because some characters have bonus abilities they can take for free or abilities that change the rules of some of their specific actions. The first action is to move. For one action point, you can move up from one location to another adjacent location. The next action is climb. You can climb from one location to an adjacent location that's one higher. So basically climbing up a hill. You cannot go two or three spaces higher, so make sure that it's not too steep when you're climbing up the mine. The next thing you can do is build. If you have any starting resources, and I believe each player gets two random starting resources from the bag to begin the game as well, uh, you are going to be able to take the, start your, the resources that you have, any one of the tiles, and place it adjacent to you. It can um, either be on your same space or in an adjacent location, thus letting you kind of climb up with the pieces that you currently have. Most of the time when you use this ability though, make sure that you use these starting tiles or the tiles that have no resources on them, making it so you don't lose any points at the end of the game. Uh, you can also go ahead and mine. Mining is going to cost you two actions, but you can mine a space underneath you or adjacent to you or adjacent and one up. And you're mainly going to be wanting to mine the different types of resources. There are copper, which are going to be worth one point at the end of the game, and uh, four points for every copper after your fourth one. Gems, which are worth three, but could be dropped to one. Gold, which is worth two, and diamonds, which are worth six. And there's a variety of resources that you'll see at the beginning of the game board. Uh, the next thing you can do is antagonize. You're able to push players and they'll fall one space and they can also fall over and thusly they'll have to get back up in order to, to continue moving on their turn. You can deposit as long as you are adjacent to or on your starting space. You can deposit any of these tokens that you have on your bag in either column uh, and put them into your deposit and it'll cost you one action each as long as you're on that starting area. That's a way for you to score at the end of the game. 
You're also able to stand. Well, the only way you can stand is if you have been knocked over by being antagonized or by being pushed, whatever the language is for the game. But basically, if you're on your side, to get back up, it'll cost you two action points. And then finally is steal. That's for your main actions. To steal, you have to spend two action points. And if you're adjacent to another player, you can take one of their top resources in their bag. Each of the different columns in the bag have a total of five spots for resource tiles that you can place on there, and people can only steal the top one. However, when you use your resources, you can select for building, for instance, any of the tiles, provided you keep them in the same order. The, the final, final action is a kind of a game ending action. Basically, when you want to extract, which is you want to leave the game, so you want to take your character in its starting position away, as long as you're on that position, you can spend six action points, and that will let you basically leave the game. Thusly, you're not going to then lose negative 10 points at the end because you managed to kind of escape the falling caverns. And if you don't do that, you're still in the game to try and win, but they're gonna have a deduction fee because they had to rescue you from the molten lava that, that you got yourself trapped in at the end. Uh, and then basically, yeah, you'll just take any of these actions, and there's quite a few of them, up until the point where you have zero action points left, or you wish to spend no more action points. Then what's gonna happen is you'll check the game board. You're gonna check for explosive bomb tiles. If an explosive bomb tile has two tiles that are literally adjacent to it on the same level that are empty, that bomb will explode. So you're gonna look around the game board and see is there any of these tiles that have two adjacent tiles that are, uh, that are not there. And if, for instance, you have one that is uh, there with two adjacent tiles that are not there, then the bomb will explode. You'll take the bomb tile and you'll place it on the main game board, whether it be on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then each adjacent area around it is going to lose the top tile. You'll simply take these tiles, remove them from the game, put them back into the bag. And that is one way in which the tiles from the game board are going to be removed. The other is, of course, when you choose to mine tiles. And the main one is a fairly simple one. Basically, if you have three bombs uh, that have been placed on this track here, uh, from then on, at the beginning of every player's turn, they're going to have to remove three or four or five or six or seven or eight, based on how many bombs are here, uh, tiles from around the game board up until the point where there are no tiles left. So at some point in the game, you might actually have no tiles uh, to get back to your starting location. So you might actually have to build by using tiles in your bag to get back in order to be able to extract. And that's the game. That's it. You're going to take your 10 actions. You'll be moving and mining and climbing and building and pushing and pulling and all that good stuff. And ending your turn to check to see if there are any bombs that explode. Bombs often trigger other bombs. If you ever reveal a bomb when removing tiles because of a bomb, that bomb will also explode, irregardless of how it is positioned. But otherwise, if there are just two adjacent tiles in the same, uh, same height that have been removed, that bomb will explode. You'll be placing them on this track here. And the beginning of everybody's turn, they're going to be removing based on the number of these tokens that have been placed on this area here. Could be, um, it's usually gonna start at, it will start at three but it could go all the way to, to eight. So this can start going like crazy and just based on the placement of this game board, which is always going to be different each and every time. When you finish the game, basically everybody has extracted or blown up or can't get back to their starting location, the game is going to end and you're going to calculate points. You're going to give yourself points for your copper ore, which is either one or four points based on how many you have. Um, you're going to get yourself some points for gems. But the largest volume gem is going to be dropped to one. So whatever has the highest amount, that's actually one point instead of three each. Gold is always worth two, and diamonds are worth six. Uh, so you're going to calculate all these points here, as well as if you're playing contracts, you'll calculate those as well. Contracts are cards that you can turn in one every turn if you're able to. There are some uh, exceptions to that rule based on like you can take them now and hopefully cash them in later or lose points. But for the most part, you'll be scoring anywhere between like eight and three points whenever you steal a gem or a diamond from somebody or cap a bomb block or deposit a tile in someone else's extraction tile area, etc., etc. But yeah, score your points up, see who has done the best, and that's how you play the game Undermine. Undermine is a action management tile extraction board game. Uh, it's one of the very few I've ever seen that actually involve extracting tiles, where you start in a specific location on the game board, you move your character around by spending action points, you use the uh, 
items you have in your bag to place in order to eventually be able to climb up these mountains here and then extract certain resources, whether they be diamonds or whether they be gems of certain types or copper. All while at the same time being aware that bomb tiles might be revealed. And remember, at the end of your turn, if bomb tiles are exposed or like unstable, then they are going to blow up. And blowing up bomb tiles ends the game sooner. There are also ways where you can blow up yourself or other players. If, for instance, you unveil a bomb tile that's exposed and you move away and somebody's adjacent to that tile, any tile that is exploded with a character on it is actually going to make that character fall over, thusly losing them action points on their turn because they'll have to stand up. This is all about gathering the most resources. It's all about making sure you build pathways to get to where you need to go and using your um, actions to be able to not only deposit the tiles that you get from your bag, but eventually to extract yourself out of the game area, preventing yourself from dying. This is kind of like a Deep Rock Galactic style game if you're thinking about it in vertical, um, like ascension type of a game where you're like removing tiles and moving downward as opposed to like uh, the Deep Rock game that I have, which actually involves you kind of adding tiles as more like a tile removal or addition, I guess, to dig through the areas. Like a, It's kind of like a descent type of game. This one's kind of more uh, visually representative of digging and, and diving and gathering resources and escaping. Uh, speaking of that, uh, there are different characters, like this Yara here is able to, at the beginning of her turn, she can transfer a tile from her bag to her deposit without being adjacent to her deposit tile, which is awesome. You can basically just say, oh, I've got this diamond here, I want to deposit it here, even though I don't actually, uh, I'm not actually standing next to my deposit area. Or uh, each turn I can perform one free mine action on a valuable resource, so maybe like a diamond or like copper or two free mine actions on rocks. And rocks are basically just empty tiles. They're basically useless except for building. So she's gonna give you additional bonus actions. Whereas Rudy here is going to be able to uh, use an action point to climb any adjacent space regardless of how high. Now normally you can only climb one, but this character's got a rope so she can actually climb all the way up no matter how far down she is. So she can go from one location all the way up. Um, and she's also able to use 2 AP to jump across a tile gap. So if there's literally nothing down there or there's a gap in between, you can just simply go uh, from one area to the next. Um, and so each of these characters, and there's quite a few of them, have their own unique abilities that make the game more interesting. Each character also has an ability grade more stars equals more difficult to master, uh, but they're all they're all basically balanced. I would say I always start with the more simple ones like Yara and Rudy, um, and then move to Hildy, Mortimer, and Cartwright. And finally, you can go with Otto and Bernadette. Each of these characters have a ton of different abilities and ways to play the game, and based on their ability, will make you play the game quite differently each time. I also suggest you use contracts. Contracts allow you to kind of change the game mode, uh, focus on some things you normally wouldn't focus on, like maybe um, being more aggressive towards other players or protecting other players and yourself from bombs exploding, depositing tiles in unique ways, etc., etc. It's kind of a cool game. It's a get in, get resources, and get out. Reminds me of Clank, but minus the deck builder and with a bunch of vertical tiles. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this game, actually. This is kind of a uh, diamond in the rough, so to speak, game. I really enjoyed the moving around and trying to kind of puzzle my way up onto this mountaintop, mining as I go, realizing there's certain rules as to how I can mine and how I can move based on my character, and then how many action points I need to get back to my base to deposit the stuff I've gathered, make sure I don't get stolen from. More players is obviously better, because that involves a lot more stuff happening, a lot more bombs exploding, and the game can go from really relaxed to outright insane very, very quickly. The rules can use some adjusting. It's um, not as simple to understand how bombs work. Hopefully I explain it in a way that it makes you understand fairly well, but for us it took us a bit to understand. It's not all the tiles that you removed, it's just a specific amount. It's not that the tiles in the next, next to them in two areas need to be completely removed, but just based on the height of the tiles. Um, that kind of thing, just uh, understanding that. Uh, also too, right now I don't have the map layout, so I had to realize how to kind of create my own layout to make it, because you want it to be kind of balanced across all sides, which is why I definitely am excited to see what they make for their specific map tiles. But I kind of try to balance out areas to make it so that everybody kind of had a decent starting area. Nobody kind of got first pick of the best area. Um, so that, that was also a little bit of a thing. Um, and, and, and finally, I suppose, is uh, the artwork. I'm not super, I, I mean, I don't 
dislike the art that's in the game currently. I mean, I, I like the main box. I think it's kind of cute and functions pretty well. I like to just see more of it represented on these cards here and whatnot. Now, this is a prototype, and so the artwork will be probably changing. So I guess you'll have to look at the Kickstarter to see for yourself. But right now, I'm not super overwhelmed and excited about how the art stands in this game. But as far as the gameplay goes, it's very enjoyable. It's very unique. It's very different. Extracting tiles. The fact that they're kind of actually like pieces that you're going to be taking and placing, and there's certain columns you can place them in, and all this actually kind of matters. It matters how you use your actions. You have a lot of action points, which I actually wish were transferred onto my character sheet with a token as opposed to this one over here. So each player is not moving this token around here to distinguish how many actions they have. And yes, 10 action points is quite a lot. So there's a lot of like little things you can do and you have to kind of set up your turn that can kind of take a little while for you if you're pretty new to the game. Uh, the abilities work wonderfully. They're simple, straightforward, and they get a little more complex as you go, and they have some powerful abilities. Each character is unique, but very, very powerful, which I really do enjoy. Overall, this is a solid game. Like, and there's certain parts of it that I just really, really, really enjoy, and some parts that I'm hoping and excited to see some changes in just how they kind of set the rule structures up, uh, examples of certain things, and maybe even some extra artwork here and there. But yes, overall, if you're looking for a digging game, a tactics game, and something very unique and different that I haven't seen before in terms of board games, then this is something I definitely strongly suggest you take a look at. Currently on Kickstarter, the game Undermine. Go ahead and look at go ahead and take a look at it. Down below, link. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review of the game Undermine. If you're interested in picking it up, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and if you think we've earned it, if you've watched more than one of our videos before, if you find me interesting in some way, I don't know why you would, but if you did, which I'd appreciate, uh, you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Subscribe button and there's a little bell notification button to see more of our videos where we show you Kickstarter games, indie created games, and even some more popular ones here on this channel. There's a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one. In fact, we will be playing this one, which is also a great way. I always suggest people to at least see a little portion of our live streams because they're very quick, they're very straightforward, and they show you how the game is played to help you determine if this is the game for you. Every Sunday, make sure you take a look. And on Whatnot, every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. PST, we sell games, we play games, we talk about games. It's a fun little event that we like to do on our other streaming platform. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to delving in the undermine with you next time. <laughs>